because there's things you absolutely cannot predict. Sometimes they're a miss on day one, but they're not a miss on day two and day three. But the person who's running the system plays a huge factor, very limiting as to what I'm gonna achieve in one day. Because running a room at a show is a combination. Because the years that I don't have a plan, it means that I'm all over the place. On this mode, my eyes are doing most of the work because I'm not having enough time to let my ears adjust as I move from room to room. Day two and day three, that's where I deep dive. Yeah, since it's Expona this week, I thought I'd make a little video just to share some of my thinking and my thought process this year after having spent uh, three days at the Montreal Audio Fest. And who knows, maybe it might help some of you uh, navigate a few days of audio show um, chaos. Oh, wait, oh. Think of what I want out of the audio show. Do I want to look at dipole speakers? Do I want to look at specific brands? Am I looking for just something that's new and original? Or am I just going to improvise and wing it and have no plan? That's okay too. Yeah, the years without a plan were the years that I felt like when the show was over that I got the least out of it. It even felt like, like it never happened pretty much a day after the show was over. And in recent years, seeing the exhibitor side of the shows um, by shadowing Thomas and Stereo a little bit, helping and shadowing uh, Lee Song Canada, see how, how they all had the struggle setting up their rooms and the challenges and logistics that they had to face. It allows me to come out of the show and have a few glasses that are half full or full, as opposed to having 50 cups that all have a few droplets in them of knowledge. Because the years that I don't have a plan, it means that I'm all over the place. Those are the years where I come back from the show and think, God, nothing sounds good at the show. Thinking of nothing was impressive, meh. But the years that I have a plan and that I spend more than just a day so that I execute my plan, completely different story. This year, was exactly that. This year I, I, I had a plan, and the plan wasn't that I predetermined all the steps I was gonna take the time that I was there. No, the concept of the plan that, that I use and works for me. So right away, if I'm spending only one day, it's very limiting as to what I'm gonna achieve in one day. Because there's things you absolutely cannot predict. I can't predict what's gonna capture my attention. Very much a matter of timing, because there are probably great rooms that the moment I walk into them, might be in between demonstrations. There might be too many people. There might not be any place to sit. There might not even be enough room, enough space for me to get in. So timing is a factor that is completely out of my control. And that timing, it's not just what's going to capture my, what's going to capture my attention. I can't predict it. Because as much as I looked at the list of exhibitors beforehand, the list of exhibitors doesn't tell you the configuration of all these systems. I don't know. I can't predict. Like I can't sit there and look at every room and say, oh, they're pairing this kind of speaker with this type of amplification, with this type of source. Oh, this would be interesting. I'd be curious to hear that. No, there's none of that. Just big list of manufacturers and brand names. But you really have no idea what models and which ones of these brands are going to be part of a system that you get to listen to, or are they going to be sitting on a shelf? You can't predict it. And like I mentioned before, I can't predict in one day which of the rooms I'm going to have the privilege to be able to spend more time in the others. Another thing I can't predict is out of the brands that I want to see or curious about, I can't predict who the person running the room is going to be. Because running a room at a show is a combination of things. It's a combination of first being really good at setting up a hi-fi rig and adjusting it to its acoustic, acoustic surroundings. Check out Thomas Estereo's latest video on this when he set up his room this year at the Montreal Auto Show. He had to get the help of Leonid. And, and Leonid, I met him with Thomas at Toronto Fest a few years ago. 
You're the man. No, I'm not. You were, you He's wanna, the man. You want to say something? I've just been schooled. Because I looked at the subs, and these things are supposed to go down to 20 hertz. Yeah. So I'm like, why do you have subwoofers? Really? And then he used the key word, which was, I used the subwoofers for treatment. But then the light bulb went off in my head. I went, what? And that's when I, when I asked, I said, for treatment, meaning, are you using the phases of the subwoofers to counteract the base problems that comes from the floor, the wooden floor over there, generated by the speakers? And that's when he explained it. And they had a massive room, one of the biggest rooms at the show. But a bigger the room, bigger the problem. And they had all kinds of issues in this room. Issues like floor panels underneath the carpet weren't even secured. Like, it's like we were walking on passive radiators. It was insane. And what did they have set up in this? The massive, massive 100K plus PMC pair of speakers. These were monster speakers. So these guys were so good at what they were doing. They had an arsenal of subwoofers with them. Not to add bass, trust me. These PMC speakers do not need subwoofers. They had these subwoofers to cater to the boomy corners and areas of the room. They were setting up these subwoofers and tailoring the phase of these subwoofers in the spaces of the room where bass was, was sitting there and causing standing waves, which was creating a massive boomy effect, which was killing all of their sound. So they were setting up subwoofers in various areas and tuning the phase of these subwoofers so that it would suck out the excess amount of bass, which then allowed the PMC speakers to actually shine in the room. So these guys knew and have so much experience and knowledge that they're capable of doing this. But this is not every exhibitor that knows how to do this. So they need to have this level of understanding, for one. But then I find what sets some exhibitor, ex exhibitors apart is how good of a DJ they are. And a good DJ doesn't just know how to make a good playlist. A good DJ knows how to make his system sound good in the room that he's in, what to play, what not to play, what order to play it in, and how to mix it all. Some of these rooms, either are playing too loud, too low, the playlists are not going to be what I like or what you like. Got to factor this stuff in. Because Let's say you, you come into a room and it is your dream system in terms of brands, combination, and theoretical synergy. But the person who's running the system is changing songs every 20 seconds and playing the same five audio file bass test tracks. Hmm. You're going to be disappointed. So the exhibitors plays a huge factor. And there's talent required and experience to put on a good show. You gotta really know the system that you're putting up, know it well, what's its strength, what's its weaknesses. Get a feel for the room that you're setting it up in so you know what level to play it at. Not every system should be played over 90 dB in these rooms. Nope, nope, nope. You need to understand these things. And me saying this is easy. Doing it, oh my God, trust me gang, this is difficult. That's why a lot of the rooms can seem lackluster and just seem meh. Some rooms can feel terrible, complete miss, complete miss. Although sometimes they're a miss on day one, but they're not a miss on day two and day three. Keep that in mind. So in terms of what you can't predict, you can't predict what rooms that you're going to be able to spend time in. It's hard to predict. You're not going to be able to predict which room is going to be run by someone with a playlist that is compatible with you, that are running the system properly, that are in tuned with the acoustics of the room that they are renting. There's a lot of factors. So you got to keep that in mind in your planning. So if you have only one day, whatever you do, you're limited. And that's okay. If you only have one day, don't think of what could have been. Just make the best of what you're seeing. For me, the first part 
that I do. And I'll either spread this over the first full day if I'm planning on spending the weekend or the first third of the day if I'm stuck there for, for only one day. And that first phase is the scouting phase. That's what I call it. It's basically me scouting the whole place. I'm not spending a large amount of time in any room. Just going around with my phone, taking notes. On this mode, my eyes are doing most of the work. This is, I'm looking. I'm looking for things. What's catching my eye? My ears are also playing a role, but it's secondary on day one. If something triggers them that becomes noteworthy, I'll take a note of which room that was or, or what, was no, what was noteworthy. But it doesn't happen a lot on the first day because, the only, because I'm not having enough time to let my ears adjust as I move from room to room. So most of the work on day one comes from what I see. But every time there are things that my ears will pick up that I will take a note of so that I remember what room that is. So after the first phase is done, after the scouting is done, I end up usually with a bunch of notes. So which rooms were noteworthy? Which rooms did I want to see, but I didn't get to see them because they were always full every time I showed up at them? Those are also notes that I keep. So in the first half of day two, what I'll usually do is I'll try to go and consolidate those rooms that I wanted to see but couldn't on day one. I try to get those out of the way at the beginning of day two. And if I can, great, because that just adds to my notes of anything that's noteworthy for me to then choose what I'm going to deep dive in on the second half of day two and day three. Yeah, so day two and day three, that's where I deep dive. That's where I try to pick two to five rooms. I try not to pick more than five rooms for day three or the second half of day two because I need to spend at least an hour in these rooms, at least an hour. So some rooms I'm going to end up spending an hour, some rooms I'm going to end up spending two hours. And then in between these rooms, can't just hop from one to another. Usually I'll take a break in between these rooms, go get a drink, go get a bite to eat, something. And this is not even factoring the human element because you can come across all kinds of people that you end up sparking conversations with. Can't predict that in your time. So that's what I'm saying. Two to five rooms to deep dive in. Two is a little bit, little bit small. That's why I like to get five because it's always unpredictable, but at least if I have five and I end up doing three, sure, it's fine. Even if I end up doing two, it's fine. So I'll do one of two things to start when I walk into a room. It depends on what's going on. If a chair in the sweet spot, so in the middle of the speakers for me to get a proper stereo image is available, at one, of, I'll go sit at one of these chairs for a few minutes. Now, when I walk into any of these rooms, my ears aren't adjusted to the room yet. They're not. And to me, that's a thing. It's a really big thing. I never used to be aware of it because all I was doing is I was just chasing the wow factor. But guys, it's impossible that 200 high-end, phenomenal hi-fi rigs, not a single one of them impress you? Nah, come on. I think it's people, people who say that, I think might be jumping room to room a little too fast. This has to adjust. Your ears have to adjust. Anyways, in my case, they did. Take, it. Take this for what it's worth. If you're 100% convinced that you know better, good on you, bud. So for me, I let my ears adjust, and that takes time. So first, I'll go try to sit in that sweet spot if it's available. If it's not available, but the host of the room is just standing there and nobody's bothering them, I'll try to spark a conversation with them. And again, I try to do this as respectfully to the room as possible because people are trying to listen. So when people are trying to listen, some people absolutely don't care. And the room hoppers, I see the room hoppers. They don't give a shit about anything that's going on. They're going from room to room. They're looking for the wow factor. They walk right in front of the speakers while people are listening. They sit there or grab their phone or their big camera and flash it in front of everyone. That's not how I do it. Like I'm, I'm very much aware of like people's time because maybe I'm not the only one who's in their deep diving mode right now. And they're trying to really get a feel for what they're hearing. Last thing they want to hear is me showing up and talking out loud and starting to make the same bullshit audio file lingo talk with the guy who's running the room. So what I try to do with the person who's running the room at first is, um, you know, introduce them, keep my voice down, uh, ask them, hey, like, what kind of playlist are you, are you running right now? Like, uh, what could I expect to hear? Because that gives me a really good idea to know what to expect. 
if all they're gonna if, if I look at the playlist and and they're just playing tracks that I've never heard of before and it's a genre of music that I really don't like right away maybe try another room or I ask them if they're open to suggestions or requests some rooms are open to requests they're just not going to take your request because you decide to raise your hand in the middle of the crowd and then they're just going to do it but if you go talk to them on the side quietly and you ask them for a couple tracks if they have them they might play them for you but then I'm um, if I can, I'll try to sit in the sweet spot for a little bit, but I purposely won't sit there long. And if I can't sit there yet, it's co totally fine because my ears need to adjust. So I'll purposely want to sit far over to the side or in the back corner. I'll love sitting in the back corner. I absolutely love sitting in the back corner because it also, it's, it's one of those dangerous places in a room to be. Because if there's a problem, if there's this, the, the system's not well tuned for the room, you're going to feel that boominess if you sit in the back corner. But if you sit in the back corner and it's not boomy, Right away, that's a good sign. So I'll sit there, and I'm just going to listen to the playlist for the first 30 to 45 minutes. And I take notes in the first five minutes, then I stop. And then I'll take notes again after 35 minutes of listening. Because for me, after about 30 minutes or so of listening, my ears have started to adjust pretty good. But I say 30 minutes, but this is 30 minutes of listening to music. If you're in a room where the host is putting on a demonstration that lasts about 20 minutes and then stops and doesn't play a single note for another 20 to 30 minutes while everyone talks and everyone debates, I get it. This is tricky. Again, I can't predict. So once my ears have adjusted after listening for a good period of time, I'll take notes again to see if my notes have changed from my notes early on. And as soon as one of those sweet spot chairs opens up, it doesn't have to be the first one in the front because sometimes you can't tell in a room if the sweet spot's gonna be better if you're in the first row, second row, third row, fourth, or fifth, depending how big the room is. So I try most of them. Sometimes you can't try most of them, but this is why I'm deep diving, right? I got the whole day here. So some of these rooms, I'll spend two hours in the room because I'm really getting a feel for it. Yeah, so once my ears have adjusted and now I get to sit and try out these sweet spots, now I get to properly hear the sound stage. I get to really feel what's going on. And you get a far better understanding of the system at this point. Now I know. And especially when I consider what I feel like at this moment listening to the system. And this is what happened actually in the Heaven 11 Pure Audio Project room. On the first day, I'd walked out of the SVS room. It was nuts. Like that bass was just nuts. Anybody who had a hotel room near that room, oh my God. So when I got in the Pure Audio Project room, I knew my ears hadn't, hadn't adjusted and I wasn't there the first day to really get this, this, like absorb what the room was doing. But the soundstage felt a little bit flat and it felt rolled off the top. It really did. It, it didn't feel like the details were sparkly and, and, and nicely textured on the top end the first day. But I thought nothing of it because I knew that my ears hadn't adjusted yet. So by the time I got back there and did a deep dive on day three, completely different. So after spending that first hour in that room, when I sat in the sweet spot, wow, I could, now I got that open baffle effect, that AMT motion driver was pumping out so much great, glorious information, those great textures, with great detail. Now I could actually tell, like on some of the Miles Davis's tracks that were playing, I could pinpoint Miles in the room, I could pinpoint his stand-up bass that was farther in the back corner. Like, I could pick all these things up. On the first day, not a chance. Couldn't do that. So another thing that happens also with these exhibitors from day one, day two, and day three, the ones who really care about how their room sounds, after day one, trust me, in the evenings, a lot of them are doing fine-tuning adjustments. Some of them are readjusting the positioning of their speakers in the room. Uh, some of them are even trying different uh, settings on their DSPs. They're trying all kinds of things. They're moving some of the absorption stuff around. Not everyone. Some of them are. Guys, like I mentioned before, like Leonid that ran that room I told you about with all those subwoofers that they were playing with the phases to control the bass problems in that giant room. Trust me, these guys, they want their room to sound good. They're so good, in fact, that they knew how to position their rig in the room so that the sound was the best 
not in a sweet spot, but when you're standing at the door. Why? Because that's what pulled people in the room. Yeah. So, see, some of these guys are magicians, but not all of them. So when they, when they fine-tune their room at the end of day one, on day two, things will sound better, generally speaking. And come day three, that's usually my favorite sounding day, because I find day three is the less busiest of, of, of the days. And there has to be something, I think. There's got to be something about on the busiest day where the most people, so where the rooms are the most crowded, I think naturally the people running these rooms are going to crank the volume a little bit more because the more people that are in the room, the more sound energy is absorbed by these people. Meaning if they want that wow factor, that heart thumping, chest pounding bass, they're going to crank it up. So the more rooms are pulling current from the hotel panels, there's going to be some noise going on. There's going to be some issues in the power. So that's, everyone's going to be playing against each other. But on the third day, which is never the busiest day, now you have exhibitors that know their room. They know what volume to play the songs that they're in their room. So their systems sound their best. And nobody's drawing so much current. Like one year, the Focal and Nime room, I think it's happened two years in a row, where they freaking blow the breaker. Scout, take notes of the rooms that you want that were noteworthy. And on day two and day three, that's when you deep dive in those rooms. And the process of deep diving in each room, make sure they're playing playlists that are compatible with you, that they are playing at a sound level that is compatible with you. Let your ears adjust by not hogging the sweet spot. Move around at first. Give yourself time, at least 30 minutes of adjustments at least 30 minutes avoid the rooms that are too loud avoid the rooms that are not dj properly that are just 20 second tracks after 20 second tracks try to avoid those maybe you'll get a better experience out of the show i know i did thank you all for watching again i had this was a nice and simple one have a good show expone is coming right up guys Leave a comment. Let me know. Are you going to the show? I haven't decided if I'm going yet. I'm like, I kind of want to. I want to meet up with ABX. You know, Mr. James and his crew. It should be fun. But uh, yeah, I got to see if, uh, if uh, budget allows. So all right. That being said, have a good one. Enjoy the show. See ya.